Um, would you like to uh, chime in, Joanna? Sure. Hi, Senator Reed. Hi, Thank Joanna. You. Taking, I'm Joanna Skokie from the ARC Rhode Island and also Rhode Island Advocacy for Children. And um, as you know, the federal law IDEA, um, which provides for a free and appropriate public education for children with disabilities or most vulnerable children, um, has been really never fully funded. Well, it hasn't been fully funded. Um, right now during COVID, these children, the families I work with are devastated. Uh, financially, uh, mental health wise, um, learning, their children are falling behind in learning. What is your office doing to A, try to get more funding for children, uh, disadvantaged youth and children with disabilities? And also, what is your office doing to keep the protections in place? Because I know in the spring when COVID first started, there was real fear that the um, Secretary of uh, the uh, commissioner of the uh, Department of Education, Betsy DeVos, would uh, give waivers to the state, which would allow them to kind of not provide the services and supports. So and right now in Rhode Island, our education system is devastated and these children are not getting the supports and services. Families are crumbling around us and yet there's no full funding, which is, is wrong. <laughs> been wrong well, for years well, and years. It is wrong. We are fighting for the full funding. I've been doing it since I got there. As you know, uh, the, the original IDEA called for a 60-40 split, federal, state, and we've never, never even got close to, I think, 50%. So it it's, uh, leaves the state holding the bag, literally. So we're trying to push that. That is, again, year in and year out for 20 years, we have not been successful. Uh, we are in, a, in an individual basis, our staff is responsive to families who will call us and say they have a problem. And we encourage people, if they feel they have no place to turn, call us. We have I've got tremendous colleagues that will take the case up. They'll, you know, they'll work through our Washington office, the, the Department of Education, they'll work locally. So we want to help, we'll do the best we can. The other issue of money is it goes back to this the crisis is that's why we, we originally put in the, the $1.25 billion COVID fund because give the governor flexibility to use this for special COVID related and obviously one population is the special education population where you have to do some extra things you didn't have to do before before COVID. That's one aspect. Getting ready for this new school year, we hoped we could pass before we left in, in August, uh, another major uh, multi-trillion dollar bill, which would have given the state additional money, which they could have focused on schools, and particularly, how do you connect children with learning disabilities? Um, some of them, basically, they have to be physically in contact with their instructor so you have to have special uh, protections for them, protections for the teacher, that costs money. Others might need technology, but it's not just a laptop. It might be even more sophisticated technology because of their condition. That costs money. These families don't have money. And of course, you know, it's one thing if you're, if you're fortunate enough to be middle or upper middle class, but if you're a poor family and you have got disabled children, you've got a real problem. So that's how, that's what we're trying to do. The key I think comes down and you put your finger out initially, it's money. Uh, we should fully fund IDEA like we, we intended to 30 years ago when we passed it. And then we should have specialized money for the COVID vi uh, virus through the, these bills we're passing. So my question would be just one quick follow-up is how can we help your office get this done and create a push, not only in our state, but nationally? Well, I think, that, you know, there is a very strong, because we are in constant contact with uh, the special education community, both the instructors and the families. So we, there is, there is a, this doesn't go unnoticed. It's just, and it's nationwide too, my colleagues across the country too. But it's just one of those things that 
we're pushing, pushing very hard and we get a little progress, but we don't get enough. Uh, and uh, again, you've had a situation where uh, when the Republicans took over the Congress in 2010, they insisted on the Budget Control Act, which stopped, essentially put a, a real halt on domestic spending. So our ability to expand uh, special education spending was curtailed. And that there's still, you know, that insistence upon um, you know, curtailing investment. I say it's investment, really. I mean, education is, is not, so, it's spending, yes, but it's investment more than anything else. And so that's one of the other obstacles we've run into. But um, there is a very strong parent and professional network in the state of Rhode Island. We're in close contact with them. Um, it's just trying to it's just trying to get the you know get more money at a time when there are so many other demands for more money. When you talk about the range of issues, I mean, healthcare in terms of COVID affordable housing in terms of that's a crisis we're seeing throughout the state. Uh, you're talking about job training now because the economy is changing so quickly. All of those uh, forces are, are, are competing with uh, special education funding and it, it makes it very difficult. 